Welcome to the sixth video in our series on linear programming and mixed integer programming. In this, uh, in this video, we're going to get into the details of integer variables and how you can use integer variables to broaden the, the scenarios or broaden the number of problems that you can solve. So we're going to, in this video, focus on understanding the background behind uh, integer variables, uh, how you actually go about solving uh, these are how a solver will go about solving these types of problems using the branch and bound or branch and cut techniques. Um, and then we'll go through a quick example to see what that actually looks like. In following videos, we'll go through implementation in Pyomo and, and uh, specific examples that are more realistic. So first, let's talk about how integer variables are useful. Uh, there are a number of possible applications for integer variables. Uh, really, your imagination is the limit in how you use these. But some common applications include categorization of uh, one or more objects into certain groups, uh, assigning system states based on the operating conditions in the system, counting discrete events, for example, you know, counting ticket sales at a, at a concert, uh, or enforcing the order of operations, where maybe you have, uh, instead of just uh, linear variables that are capturing uh, a continuous uh, performance within a, a range, you actually have to enforce an order of operations in, in order to have a non-integer variable take on a value. Right, so these are just different examples. Uh, of course, there are many more that you, that you can come up with. So the basic idea behind branch and bound is that we will formulate a problem uh, that involves integer variables will relax the values of all the integer variables to take any possible value um, that, they, that they want, right? We'll make the integer va uh, variables continuous. And we'll solve that continuous problem using a simplex method or some other linear problem solution technique. Uh, we'll solve that relaxed problem, and then we'll subsequently uh, constrain the problem uh, one variable at a time so that we can enforce the integrality constraints that we need to ultimately um, achieve. And as we go through this process, we decide whether or not we want to continue down a, a particular branch based on the, the comparison between the integer solution uh, and, uh, or the incumbent, the best integer solution, and the relaxed or partially relaxed solutions that we're developing along the way. So the process for this is as follows. We start by initializing our incumbent solution to be some, uh, you know, uh, very, very small number. In this case, we're going to be uh, maximizing some objective function. Right? So this is for a maximization problem. So we start by initializing our incumbent solution to be some, uh, let's say, negative infinity value. So then any solution that we develop after this should be uh, better, right? We're maximizing. The next step is we're going to uh, solve the relaxed subproblem K, and again, we'll go through what each of these mean in a little bit more detail later. We'll solve this relaxed subproblem. That means we're going to let all the integer variables in this, uh, in this problem become continuous. That's called relaxed. We'll solve that relaxed problem. Next, we'll choose a non-integer non valued variable. So this, in our solution, uh, Y, we have individual variables YI. Uh, so we'll pick one of the YI variables that doesn't have an integer value, and we're going to force that to become an integer uh, in, further, so in uh, further solutions along this branch. We create two integer subproblems, right? We take that yi integer, uh, non-integer variable, and then we create a, a yi uh, m and a yi n subproblem. In each of these problems, we're just forcing the integer, or the, sorry, we're forcing the non-integer variable to take the integer value on the lower or upper bound uh, adjacent to where that va uh, variable currently sits. We choose one of the two subproblems and then solve that. We will then check our fathoming criteria. So we come over to this region here or to this, uh, this list of fathoming criteria and see uh, if our in our solutions do they have all integer variables? Is the problem infeasible? Is the objective worse than the incumbent solution? Um, if it is not fathomed, uh, then we'll, we'll check and see if there are any remaining unfathomed nodes. Obviously, if we just started, there would be unfathomed nodes remaining. Um, but as you go further and further in the problem, you may get to a point where you've actually explored the full tree um, and have, uh, have fathomed all the possible branches. 
So if there are any remaining unfathomed nodes, we'll just go ahead and pick a new unfathomed node. Uh, we'll now call that uh, node k, right? We'll just kind of update our value of k. Um, if there are not any unfathomed nodes, then we need to see if uh, certain conditions exist. So is there, right, if there's no unfathomed nodes, that means there's, there's nowhere left to explore. Um, has there been an incumbent solution identified? Has, has there been a Z star identified? If there has been a Z star identified, then that is the optimal solution, right? Z star is our best integer solution that we've identified. Uh, and if there's no remaining nodes, then of course that's gonna be the optimal solution. Um, if Z star does not exist, then uh, that means you know, there's nowhere else to look. There's, we have not identified an integer solution. We've explored the entire tree. So that means we actually have an infeasible problem. Uh, and then the, the algorithm terminates. So now moving back up to the other part of this uh, question of whether the, the node is fathomed or not, let's uh, assume now that the node has been fathomed, that we've met some criteria for fathoming. So let's look in a little bit more detail at what happens in that case. So first we're gonna uh, check whether these criteria are true or false. So first, uh, looking at the fathoming criteria, is it both the case that there are integer variables and our uh, solution ZK, our objective for this particular node, is better than the incumbent solution? Uh, if that is not the case, right, if, if either there's um, not all integers or the, uh, the current solution for this node is not better than Z star, then we'll just go and pick a new unfathomed node. And we've sort of, um, we, we, we haven't resolved this branch yet, right? We, we've got some information, but not enough. If it is the case that the uh, solutions are all integers and the solution is better than our incumbent, then we actually need to go back and update our incumbent solution. So we're gonna update Z star to be equal to the current node's solution. And then we fathom any uh, Z uh, nodes that are less than or equal to our new incumbent solution. And so that means that as we're going through this process, if we identify a new incumbent solution, we look back at any unresolved nodes, um, whether or not they're uh, integer solutions, we look back at any unresolved nodes and any of those that do not have a chance of being better than our current incumbent solution, they get uh, cut out of the tree and don't uh, need to be considered any further. Okay, so once we've picked an unfathomed node, then we just go back uh, up to the, to the third step where we choose a new non-integer value variable in our solution and, and kind of keep going through this process. So this is the overall uh, procedure for branch inbound.